Cheers, bro. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, another episode of the Unlaced Podcast. As I always say, if you are new here, thank you for turning up. If you have come back again, I absolutely love you. Um, been a big few weeks, massive episode today. Um, this person's actually been on the show two times, and this is the third time, but absolutely for good reason, because this episode is probably a little bit more of a celebration than a podcast. And um, I absolutely love this man. We've grown up together and what he's achieved in the last 12 months is is nothing short of amazing, which I'm so looking forward to going through. But the A-League's highest scorer ever, Jamie McLaren, welcome to the show again. Thank you, brother. Yeah, it's a, it's a hat trick. <laughs> it's a hat trick. <laughs> exactly how you brought it up in the uh, in the game that you did get to the, uh, the record, which is pretty special. Yeah. Yeah. Um... For starters, let's talk about why I'm wearing this. Because, <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, we've got a nice little dinner later. I know. Uh, and do you know what? I was thinking, Braden, I'm like, you're probably going to end up cl- cutting this clip up. But um, I won't lie. I did reach out to Jamie before the season started. I don't know how close it was to the start of season. Just to see like where he was at on the goal scoring tally. Because I'm like, I wonder if he could get it this season. And I'm like, knowing Jamie, like put a bit of a wager on it and just like throw it out. Then you were at 122. One twenty season, yeah, yeah, one twenty. And what was best? He was one forty two. One forty two, yeah, because he so retired. You, you needed twenty two to equal in the season. Yeah, twenty three to win. How many games? How many rounds are there? Uh, twenty six uh, league rounds, and then obviously finals. So look, I'm yeah. going to say, look, <laughs> I'm not saying Jamie might, wouldn't get it, but I, I'd hedge my bets there. Like I'm, I'm doing all right in this bet. So I said to Jamie, if you beat it this season, um, I'll take you to Rockpool, and he goes done. Uh, if 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 you don't, you'll take me to Nobu. Nobu's on me. <laughs> and, uh, well, rent was due tonight. I'm training the following day, I was shooting. I was getting ready. <laughs> and I actually, I actually spoke to Cameron Watson on the way here, and he I told him about it, and I go, I don't know why the fuck I made a bet with a goal scoring <laughs> machine on a on a goal scoring target. But I was probably just thinking about in the game. Uh, it's Jakey's. I'm getting a free rock pool. I'm not even thinking about breaking the <laughs> yeah, record. I'm just getting yeah. a free steak. You know what? Yeah, I know, but we we have to do it. I'm very proud. I've actually, when we were coming into this episode, I thought, how do I start this episode? Like, based off your last 12 months, because um, there's so many angles and there's just so many points of like brilliance and a lot of actually like you know, pain uh, pain yeah. points too. But when you look back on it all, like, has it sunk in some of the stuff you've achieved? Has it? Have you sort of gotten over some of the hurt as well? Uh, oh, look, the last 12 months were like up and down, roller coaster, mixed bag of everything. Um, you know, losing the grand final last year and then losing it again this year uh, and all the, the stuff in between, uh, the World Cup, um, you know, on a personal level with with my wife, Eva, we got married and uh, and had a little bit of an unfortunate miscarriage and stuff. And then uh, follow on now, we're, we're close to, to welcoming a baby girl and, and that's obviously the light of my life at the moment and, and all I'm thinking about. And, um, how yeah, long, we, how long until, how long until June? September. Oh yeah. man. You, yeah, you were going to be, I know, I know it's close cause Eva's she's, oh, she's on edge she, she? and she's ready. Like yeah. she's, she's done so well. I think it's, you always speak to people that have kids and you say like the respect of, of the women just goes to another level. And I, I, I see it firsthand now. Yeah. And, um, you know, I've got mates that have kids and, and two kids, three kids, I've got family members, I've got nieces, um, but yeah, this is, uh, it's going to be another level and it's going to be something I'm going to have to go through. And just thankfully she's coming in pre-season because yeah. it's during the season, imagine oh, missing a game. man. Yeah. You could, yeah, yeah. That would be crucial. Yeah. Imagine like, and you thank God it's not around a Socceroo camp again. God's Pro- sake. Probably will be. <laughs> yeah, probably. Enough. Yeah. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Someone will just question my, the draw. <laughs> yeah. someone will just question the commitment again. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, congratulations. And hopefully, um, that's a smooth process. Actually funny on that. One of my best mates, he goes to me. He goes, Jake, this might sound weird to weird to you because like you're not a dad and you, you've never had a kid or you don't have a partner that's pregnant. But he goes, since my missus has been pregnant, I've never been more attracted to it. Like that's what he said to me. It's like the maternal aspect of like, he goes, it's like a different experience. Yeah, it is. I couldn't understand it. Like, do you understand that? Like when you hear that a little bit? I do. I do now. Yeah. Uh, yeah that's the, what I mean. At the yeah. time I was like, you know, you start to see them, their body change and stuff like that. But uh, you, you can feel the kicks. And when you, when you feel that, I don't know, you just have a rush of- yeah. Adrenaline go through you and um, it's better than any of the 140 odd goals I've got. Um, <laughs> yeah. Just feeling that kick, yeah. you know, from her. So uh, we can't wait. It's it's going to be a, a special few months ahead and um, a lot of sleepless nights after that. But I'm ready for that, mate. It's, yeah, I've got a dog, down. Simba, who who's trained me well for that and 5.30 wake up calls and um, there'll be a few, bit earlier now. 
Do you know what would be crazy is Simba's relationship with the yeah. kid. Like that that breed of dog, Golden Retriever. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they're so – the the TikToks you see with those babies and – He's going to be integrated dog. straight away. <laughs> yeah, Like yeah. We've, we've said it. And yeah, you, you get those to. people that say, you're going to fucking neglect your dog. No way, Anyone bro. that knows me, yeah. for starters, anyone that knows Eva, we won't do that. Yeah. Like it's – he'll be – he's number one if, if, to start off with and, um, you know, we'll be welcoming a little girl into the family and, and he'll be integrated from day one and just sniffing around and – yeah, there'll be times where he gets excited. We've got to be careful of that, but um, it's part of part of life. Oh, we can't wait, mate. That's going to be it's going to be a big moment for everyone. Um, sticking with off the field, obviously, because we are in the off season. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you've been doing some training, but I want to go a bit deeper of of how you actually spend your off seasons and things that you've been doing. Because we, I don't think we've ever done a podcast where you haven't been um, in season. Yeah. So, last off season was was a write off, just purely honeymoon. We were six weeks in Europe. Um, you know, there's no point talking about that while we're sitting in Melbourne, freezing <laughs> yeah. cold. Yeah. So uh, I won't be talking about, you know, the south of France and, and Croatia. But this season was just purely, uh, we played against Argentina and uh, in China. And, and then um, I, I flew straight to Perth, Eva's from Perth and uh, stayed with her family. And, uh, you know, she wanted to be around some family whilst she's oh, pregnant and stuff because some of her, her members of, of the family will miss the birth. Um, that's reality. Oh. The mum and dad will, will come over at the right time, but the brother and sister and and uncles and nieces and stuff, they'll, they'll miss it. So um, that's part of the journey. She lives in Melbourne now. She's a Melbourneian and yeah. converted. And <laughs> um, But other than that, mate, I'm training hard. Um, this season was was weird with my body. I was able to manage it um, and just goes to show that, you know, I do all the right things to tick all the boxes and uh, train with the guys at Elite um, in Keeler East who are fantastic, uh, you know, from, you know, osteo to, to training to working on the basics of, of your body. You know, I'm not getting any younger. With what are you th- I'm, I'm still 29. I'm about you. Yeah, I'm 30, bro. <laughs> and I'm like, you're married and is about to have a kid. And I'm sitting here like thinking, like, should I ask for advice at this point? Like, <laughs> oh, no, I'm 29, bro. I'm looking at you. <laughs> yeah, I know, but you're, you're well ahead of me in regards to you're getting yourself set up with with family and stuff, which I'm so happy because you met, you've met Eva, like people that don't know your story, you met Eva a long time ago. Yeah, Perth. Perth Glory. Perth Glory, yeah. 2013 was, um, was the time and- um, yeah, like any relationship, you have ups and downs and whatever. And um, we've seen through that, got married, had the COVID period where we had three different uh, oh, dates for our wedding. And, that's right. Um, yeah. But we're here We're here now and, um, yeah, we're going to welcome a baby girl and uh, it's going to be an interesting future. So for you, when you have achieved what you have in the last 12 months, we're going to go through, and I know we joked about the um, the text and the bet that we're going to, that we got on tonight, but I, w- I will break that down a bit more for everyone because it is unbelievable um, what Jamie's done. But for you, with your game in the A-League and where you're at, and obviously every game you're so dangerous, every game you make a, a defender nervous, the coach is always making plans against you. Yeah. You're quick, you're agile. Even when you're not in the game, you're in the game. Like your mindset in the off-season, like how do you want to get better? Like what are you, what are you identifying to like get, it, get another edge? I just have to be stronger. Um, and I say that physically because I know the hard hits will, will be there, mm. but it's about how I bounce back from the hard hits. You know, there's some big centre-backs that I play against and – you know, you can hold your own, but there comes a point where, you know, they'll, they'll fucking, they'll leave one on you or, um, they'll hit you when, when you're not expecting it and especially Derby games and, and whatever. And, um, you know, I'm built for that, but you've got to start building now and, and in preseason you do that. So when you do take the hit, it might hurt for, for five or so minutes, but I'm not going off or I'm not missing games, not missing training. And, um, and that's something I've pride myself on the last couple yeah. of years. Cause since I joined the club, I tore my hammy once, um, touch wood and, and, not really, I've had injuries, but I've not missed a game. Mm. So um, it, it's hard not to take pride out of that because I look after myself, but there is a lot of factors that go into it. And it's not just uh, the Instagram stuff. It's it's actually doing the work and, yeah. and the work's been been done and it's still getting done. Correct, man. It's it's pretty crazy to think because that's the only way you can win the amount of golden boots you've you've done, not just for being a great goal scorer, but you've got to be fit and healthy on the field. And that's an element of sport that the fan and even me now being out of the game, like we don't look at enough, like yeah. how much work you have to start doing on that. Yeah. Well, I, I, like a, a journal asked me after the Dolan Moran awards and was like, you know, it's golden boot number five. Are you bored? <laughs> <laughs> right? This is a Not serious a bad question. question. <laughs> no, I, was, I was like, you know what? It's a good point. Like my missus is bored because <laughs> there's no storage for him, but yeah. Um, I'm not. I, I, like I said, I'll go for six, seven, and eight forever, how long I'm in the A-League. Yeah. I'll continue to just try and be the best. And I'm a realist, right? I understand I'm not the best natural ability striker that 
is probably sexy on the eye or the first touch or, or whatever, or the, the big name that comes. There's been strikers in the A-League that have played in the Premier League or played in Bundesliga and played uh, in Italy. Like, But at the same time, I'm always there at the end of the year. I'm always the guy on the top. And I know that's because of the, the service I get, but it's the work that I do as well and, mm-hmm. and the natural instincts that are within me and um, and, and the groundwork I've put in. Like it's, it's a number of things that the, a lot of boxes have to be ticked, but – yeah, I'm not sitting here saying I'm the best. My record is the all-time goal scorer, but I always just want to be the best version of, of myself as a player, and I can only work with what I what I can. I wish I was the size of Didier Drogba, but unfortunately I, I'm not, so I've got to work with what I've got. Yeah. Do you – and for those, like, the listeners um, back at home who aren't across Jamie's story, we did do a podcast – would have been in the episode 50s. So go back and watch that if you want to like learn about Jamie from a kid because Jamie and I did play together. But what I do want to capture because we have picked up a, like a larger audience and a lot of new listeners, which I love, have come on board since. I just want to give people the, the concept of why you're good. And a big part of it is obviously your father, but also yeah. your environment in your house and sort of how you were brought up, the tutelage you had. Like mm. people probably don't know that you had a backyard with like an 18-yard box and a goal. Yeah. Like it was a Premier League setup. So yeah, yeah. We, we were fortunate. Like we were lucky. Looking back now, like someone would pay millions for that block of land just purely because of the size. It's yeah. hard to get blocks in Melbourne. You grew up and in Sunbury, right? It was like yeah. farmland in a sense. It was. And, yeah. and you know, Sunbury, ever since, ever, every time I go back, it's getting double the size, triple the size. The wow. place, you can't even park anywhere in Sunbury <laughs> now. It's like really? become CBD. Um, oh, is it? Yeah, it's massive. So- you know, and a, a place like that is is only going to get bigger and, you know, people are starting to leave Metro and, um, but yeah, we had a massive land and, you know, I, I look back now and I, I, I can't repay the old man for the time, the money, even just the nous and the ideas to do that. You know, he could have easily just got, got in the car and drove down to Sunbury United five minutes down the road, but I think he knew if it's there, it'll be used rather than having to just hop in a car and go. And part of me thinks it was a test. Do you reckon? Yeah, yeah well, knowing your old man, yeah, he's gone. Then they're down there, and yeah, he's, what have you got? Yeah, he's got that in you know, him. Old got, man. What's you know, what's yeah. burning inside you, and and or what have you got about you? That's that's what I genuinely think. Yeah, the older I get, and the more wiser you see kids nowadays. You know, it is easy with the iPads and TikToks and shit like that. But I'm I'm thankful I didn't have that. Not that I'm saying I would I would fall into that trap as a kid now, but um, what we had was just way too easy. And yeah. in a way, it's the reason why I'm here. It's the reason why I have the goal scoring record because I was shooting the ball thousands of times a week. It's like written in poetry. Yeah. It's like written like in, in history, how yeah. it's going to happen. My, one of my favorite things, cause we were mates at a young age. One of my favorite things come to your house. I was like, let's go shoot. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. do you know Literally. what I mean? Yeah. It was like, it was like, I was unbel- like walk down a hill and I'm like, there's like 20 balls, a <laughs> oh, box wow. net. And I'm like, we're doing knee slides, like scoring goals, recreating moments. And I'm like, it was so much fun, but you would actually be drilled as well. Yeah. Um, if you said that 20 years ago in Sunbury, hey, let's go shoot. You got guys in Sunbury going, let's go shoot rabbits. That's, yeah, what yeah. that's, what <laughs> that's what they're thinking. That's, yeah. that's where we are in Sunbury. Uh, that's what we're talking about. So um, for me and Donnie, we were the outcasts. Yeah. Not in a bad way. Sunbury's changed a lot now, but um, it was all AFL dominated and, yeah. and nothing wrong with that. A, a country town, which class himself as Metro now, but um, you know, Mark Blitzavs came from there. Cam Guthrie came from Sunbury College. It's a lot of sport, um, Tommy Sheridan. Yeah, Tommy Sheridan. He was Salesian. He's on out. He's, <laughs> okay, he's, right. He was a little pretty boy. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, you know, you've you got guys like that that were just so dominant in AFL um, that, you know, thankfully there's, there's a guy that came out there and, and played soccer professionally. And I go back to Sunbury as much as I can. Are you a god there? Like, is, is it like, do you know what I mean? Not a god, but like, do people like everywhere, it's like very proud that you come from there? Is that well known? Yeah, they are. And I think it's more so the parents who, can just say to the kids like, hey, look, you, you go to school and you think, oh, it's not going to happen because we live 30, 40 minutes out of the city. We'll never be scouted yeah. or spotted. Mm. But that's that's false. That's that's bullshit. Yeah. You, you will. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, the good and the ones that will work will always find their way. Yeah. And it doesn't matter, but you've got to put in the work. You've got to put in the in the hard yards. And um, I always see this quote and it's always like, you are who you are when no one's watching. And that's a big thing is like, don't, don't post the shit, go and do it. I do the work in silence and then it, it'll come. But, um, and that's what we were doing. That was our homework. We, we've talked about it before, but that was literally 
And I'm surprised mum and dad are still together till this day. Like, <laughs> it would have really, been a lot of arguments. Like, Mate, there's your homework. And mum's like, yeah, yeah, how's yeah. your English going? Yeah. But, um, yeah, but, so you're, would your dad just be like, oh, go shoot? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give us a wink. <laughs> be, be pouring mum's wine. Like, oh, I've actually got a story. Worry, I've actually got, I mean, I've got so many <laughs> stories about your dad, but one came fresh in mind today. I saw my old man um, on the way here. He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, going to go do a podcast with Jamie. I explained our bet and he's laughing. Um, and for like our dads hit it off because mm. we would make the state teams together. And then there was a period where I'd play with you at Green Gully. We went to Gold Coast and we'd, when we played the young national team, we'd yeah, get, yeah. they'd go overseas and, and stuff like that. And they loved each other because they'd love to have a drink together and all that sort <laughs> of stuff. And dad told me this story and I don't know if I played in this game or if Donnie, your dad, who or Donnie senior told my dad this story, but you must have been like 12, 13, or 14 playing Go for on. Green Gully, and you've, you've leathered someone. Nasty as fuck tackle. Yeah. And all the parents on the field are like, ah, oh, get him off, <laughs> get him off. And Donnie's like, Jamie, Jamie, get off. And he comes over, and you get off, and he goes, that was a fucking brilliant tackle, son. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember. He's, he's giving you the finger like he told you yeah. off. He said, that was a brilliant yeah. tackle. <laughs> it was um, because I was fairly big, you know, remember, but I was yeah, fairly yeah. big at that age, and- Whenever um, we got targeted, uh, I, I was a captain of Gully, so I, I almost had to have everyone's back. And mm. um, I do. It was at Darabin. I remember it. Yeah. Um, I mean, Green Gully had a target on their back every game. Yeah, we back did. men. Yeah, mm -hmm. and 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 naturally so. And um, but I do remember that. Yeah, and, so true. Because I don't right? have too many red My cards. old man still yeah, remembers yeah. it. Like he still loves it. And I'm like, I don't even think we were playing that game, and he's telling me about it. I, I wouldn't have nah, been a part. It of It was against. I think it was against like Oakley Cannon. Or something. Yeah, it's just funny that yeah. how that came up. But that's a little bit of insight into your dad. He was he was a hard man, but he was a great soccer coach. Just to go back to to this season, because I was thinking about. I'm like. 24 goals, 29 games in the domestic season. You had three assists. You had a couple goals in the ACL. Mm -hmm. um, Socceroos as well, probably. Uh, Socceroos not in the not in the last 12, 12 months. Maybe no, not, I mean, you didn't play that many games. No, we didn't have too many Socceroo games. Obviously, we had the World Cup, but um, I was used off the bench, which, to be fair, worked worked in my case because I thought I made a bit of an impact off some of the games. And, yeah, oh, um, yeah, I had chances, had to form my way, you know, maybe against Argentina or. or or whatever, but yeah, it's the ACL was was good, um, yeah. un undefeated, but still didn't progress. Like oh, no. that's, uh, that's that's that's, that's, that's a rule I couldn't understand. We were flying back from from the Asian Champions League to Perth live on live score to see what the score between Buri Ram and Kichi. It ended up being like five all, and that fucked us because they had goal, goal difference. the goal difference. But they were they had lost games three nil or whatever, and we we were undefeated the whole time, and we got knocked out through yeah. that. It's a painful game. So right? it's really and that was because one team in China pulled out. Um, so the numbers had got changed. So it was the the outcast of the of the Champions League, which look, you have to be get yeah, over it. We've grown up another one. We've grown up playing in Asia, man. Yeah. You know, it's not always straight nah. straighty one eighty in that. And if and there's one thing I'll say is Asia's getting better. Yeah, is it? Though yeah. the quality of football. Well, look at Saudi Arabia now. Like, wow, bro, actually it's a really good point. Like uh, to be honest, well, we played Argentina in, in China and you couldn't walk the streets. There's sixty thousand fans that are coming wearing all messy jerseys, but it just shows you Asia's huge. And we've, we've done younger stuff in Asia with uh, soccer games in Asia, but China had their bubble. Now Saudi's having their bubble and it'll just, Asia will start to get an influx of better players, European players, guys from Aust national team players from Australia going there. Like there has been Milos Dekinek went to Saudi, John McCain yeah, went to Saudi, John McCain, yeah. Matt German went to Saudi. Like a lot of boys went to Saudi, Dimi Petrados, Mitchell Duke. So that market will open up again because I think that they're going to have to have Asian spots because you got to regulate it. And, yeah. Um, yeah, it's the Qatar, UAE, all these places are going to start to try and just throw money to get the best of the best and compete on not a European stage because they're not in Europe, but towards no, that level, man. It's going to be crazy. I never even thought of that. The Asian Champions League, I never even thought of that with Saudi. That is going to be insane. Well, there you go. Yeah, right. that's massive, man. That's why they, part of me, that's why they want to dominate Asia. Like they want to just yeah. be- be the best and they've got and, and Saudis and those teams like they're local boys they don't need to leave they don't yeah. leave yeah. they don't need to go to Spain well yeah it was whatever. like um, what's his name was it Abdul Rahman the guy yeah. from UAE he was yeah. one of the greatest footballers of yeah. like his generation he never left uh, the Middle East didn't need to yeah didn't need to he, he was a king around different teams in the I UAE I remember I went there, we went there for the young Socceroos and he would have been our age and he was on like a flag mm. in town like just promoting a mobile and I'm like this guy's like a king here yeah. Like, and he never left. And that's a, re it's a really good point. Actually, before I go into my question, I just want to ask you, because we've grown up like traditional, tradi traditionalists on football where Europe, Europe is like the dominant space. Yeah. English Premier League is the best league. Spain's got some of the best teams and all that sort of stuff. 
Like, what's your view on this movement in Saudi? Like, do you think it's going to be good for the game? Like, yeah, change is going to be good? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think Europe will always be Europe. Um, America is going through waves. Like, sometimes they're just, you know, the, the Beckhams and then the Ibrahimovic's um, and now obviously Messi. Mm. But they've got population. And the thing with Saudi is they don't have the population of some European countries. But you see some of the stadiums. Like, Al Itihad gets 60,000 at that game. So Scary, bro. Um, that league will get stronger and um, it'll tempt more players to, to go there. And, and why not? You've you got a hot climate, um, good weather. You can see what they're trying to do outside of football, um, get better with the with the human rights and and, and stuff like that. But um, it's sport, live golf. Oh, they're going crazy, man. It's, it's mental. You know what's got me as well? It's not just like, I know they've got Benzema and Ronaldo and Kante and Edward Mendy and all these players, but it's like players like Neves. It's mm. like going there at 24, yeah, 25. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, Yota. that's Yota, Yota like Celtic. left Celtic. He's like still young. <laughs> I'm like, that's when my head started to shift. Yep. Cause I'm like, it's not a retirement village. It's like no a way. genuine, like that's going to be a proper leak. Um, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see, see what happens. I mean, you know, he's 24. By the time he's 27, he could go back to Europe. He's yeah. Like, age. do you know what I mean? Like, it, and it's still not a bad move either he's way. He's probably filled his pockets with yeah. 10, 15 million. <laughs> Set your family up for life. Yeah. Of good course, point. Yeah. Um, going back to this season, my point was like you almost a goal to game ratio in short, right? Do you, cause I've never asked you this cause you just naturally always been a goal scorer, but do you go into the season set targets? Like, do you say internally? Like, yeah. Yeah. Like you I know, think everyone just looks at me and is like, yeah, Jamie, he'll, he'll well, get that's 20. what I mean, right? But it's not the case. But like, that's what I want to know. Like it's not the case at all. Like Jace hit 20 this year, but the last person hit 20 was probably might've been Alfie, but it's, it's hard to do, man. And, but I know that the work that I put in from day one of preseason will lead me to that, but there's going to be things along the way. I've missed penalties, um, chances I've missed. Looking back now, probably could have 30 this year, mm. more goals in games, mm. but that's me being the harsh critic. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's true. It's a good point, man. I was, I'm interested because I think goal scoring is an art. Like it's, I, and I wanted to dumb this down for everyone because I've played, obviously, <clears throat> football. i played with Jamie. In my opinion, scoring scoring is the hardest thing in the game. It's the hardest thing to do. So, like, I want to know how you know you're going to score. Like, I, I know this is a really dumb question coming from me to you with all that we've been through, but it's that's it's that it's gone to that point now where I want to know because do you know that you're going to score or do you just turn up and it just like you, you jink and you, you land and you bang, it's on your foot? Yeah, look, I know I'm going to score at some point um, during the game, but it's more a mental shift. Um, if I can stay alert from zero to 90 or 92, 93, that there'll be a chance. Yeah. So defenders might be thinking like, and I've, I've seen defenders write articles about me and, and say, you know, Mac is not always involved, but I always have to know where he is. And when they're telling me that, it's <laughs> yeah. beautiful because yeah. I'm like, fuck, at least they res they understand that that's my game. Oh, yeah, it's true. I need to keep them on their toes. I need to keep them looking over their shoulder. And the minute he takes a step to the left, I'm on his shoulder on the right. And if the cross is right, I've got, to, I've got myself a couple seconds. Yeah. And sometimes it works. Sometimes the ball gets flashed across and I've not made the run. And, you know, post analysis, I'll say to the, the winger, like Tilio, Lex, Nabu, fuck, sorry, man. I made the, I made the jink that way, but. Really, it's a simple tap in to go that way. So yeah, yeah, we've yeah. had those discussions, and um, but I have to go off instinct. It's it's within a second. I don't have time to just fucking have a cup of tea. So, and but that that comes back to the training you've always yeah. done, and and like missing goals and playing games where you haven't scored, and yeah, catching uh, moments, hasn't I it? I don't know if this might sound too technical for people that don't, don't know soccer, but I actually look at the body language of, of our team of the players. So the way they're going to shape up to the ball. Okay, are they going to cross? Are they going to? Is he going to chop? Is he going to? You know, go back on his left foot or whatever. So I, I love that so, I, so I think, much. Yeah. So I think that is amazing. So I'm staring at my wingers. I'm staring at my, my number tens and go right. Yeah, he's gonna physic. He's gonna fizz it across. My inner football is just exploding yeah. in here. Yeah, and that's I, genius. I guarantee you, I would not be alone as yeah. a striker. Yeah, I would yeah, not you, be alone. You need you, to. You almost see it before it's happened. Like, yep, yeah, it's gonna. He's gonna fizz it low. I'm, I'm there. Like you know, if your wing is a two touch kind of guy that crosses, as soon as he takes that first yeah. touch, you know if he doesn't doesn't look up. Yeah. Or he's whipping a ball in. Yeah, yeah. So you're on the like that type of stuff. Well, for like, actually, in the game where I broke the record, if you can probably find the clip, when Naboo gets the ball, I've peeled off because I'm like Naboo's gonna take a touch. He's gonna he's gonna kill it dead and he's gonna cross. Ah. Now the finish was the ugliest fucking goal you ever see. It's come <laughs> off my nose, off yeah. my kneecap and bounced over Jamie Young's leg. But I didn't care. Like yeah. I, that's, the work would been done. 
the easy part was just let it hit my body, just let it hit whatever, but do the work. So I peeled off, I think it was MI, peeled off him. Naboo put it, played a great cross. And everyone thinks, oh, you're on the same page. We are, but I know what he's going to do. And if he does it to the execution that he can, I'll get a goal here. Yeah. And we'll try and get the clip because it's just a small, it's the one that comes to mind straight away because we're talking about I remember that it. I remember it. Yeah. yeah it, was, it was one of the, so, and such, I remember watching it thinking like, like this guy, man, yeah. like he just, <laughs> and then he runs off. And yeah. all the fans are screaming, fucking <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Screaming at yeah, me like, but, uh, you didn't even mean that. Yeah, so, but oh, people, it, yeah, but people don't like, what people don't respect is the, that five seconds before. Yeah. No, they don't, they don't see it. Well, unless you've they come, from, unless you've come real, from football, yeah, like you just, you, it's sometimes you just throw your body there. Like Van Nistelrooy and stuff used to score goals like that yeah. all the time. Like you're like, what the fuck was that? But it's the movement, it's the trust with a teammate. Um, yeah, it's quality. Hey, Legends, just a quick break in this episode to thank our partners, Dabble, the gambling agency, where you dabble socially and gamble responsibly. Please only bet what you can and are willing to lose. Now, Dabble is one of the great platforms out there. I absolutely love using it. Very similar to Instagram, where you can follow some of the head honchos in the different sports, copy their bets and get some good wins on the board. Now, fortunately for me, I've been working with Dabble for over a year. This year, we are doing a stream every Tuesday night. It's called Jake's Take. It's from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m., where you can go in the Double app, you can join me. We get guests on every week. We bet on the dogs. We have an absolute ball, and they're talking about sport and cutting up the shop around what's going around town across all codes. So come on down, check it out. Double socially, gamble responsibly, and let's get back into the episode. Melbourne City, obviously, two heartbreaks in the grand finals, and we'll touch on obviously this year. But coming into the season, it's always had one of the strongest squads. Um, particularly such a mean trio of Lecky, yourself, Tilio. You've got Naboo who played really great periods as well. Um, like how exciting and or how exciting one for you was that coming into this season? And I guess, did you know that if you guys are on, it, you're going to be very hard to beat? Mm. Yeah, stability is key um, when you're trying to build a successful platform and then you add some quality players along the lines and Bell and Brusher came in, Richard van der Ven, Thomas Lamb. Um, a lot of new faces that Jordan, Jordan Boss came in off the back. He only started really this year. Mm. But um, you build a solid platform with the core group that know each other on the same page and know their qualities. But you do know you're going to get success. PK would never let you, you know, rest on your laurels or, or whatever, but it would, it would always be the work has to be done. And then mm. at the end of the training, you analyze it. What can be better? What can't be better? Really? Games. There was no hiding. Which okay in a way can be good, but at the start, it reaches a point where the same players are just hearing the same message. But yeah, okay. we were so in tune that we just needed to get better at one-off games. Like throughout the season, that's where, and I know we lost the grand final two years in a row and fuck, it hurts, hurts us more than anyone. Fans it happens can, though, man. It's like, it's football. Fans can say, oh, we spoke just, before the game as well. Yeah. And, and I think I was a bit more bullish about you guys winning, but in your fairness, yeah. you threw up, man, it's like football, anything can happen. It, it is. And, 90 minutes of football and like who 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 would have thought it would have been a 6-1 uh, grand final, but was it a 6-1? Probably not, but no. at, on the night, they deserved it. You have to put your hand up and say, they played better than us. They took their chances and we didn't. Like, yeah. But throughout the year, I, we, I, we were the yeah. best team and that's that's the hard thing about Australian soccer and Australian football. I reckon I was saying I was, I was saying your team probably over the last two, three seasons in the home and away, even in the finals, like with the odd loss here and there, the actual performance levels has been on par with the dominant Sydney FC and the dominant Brisbane Raw. Mm. Like there, it's been that dominant in regards to like there's been no one near you. Yeah. Like I think it was at Christmas this season, you guys were eight points clear with a game in hand. Eight points clear with the game in hand, I think. Yeah, so yeah, it actually when PK when, had left. when you were about to play Melbourne Victory, PK had just left, I think. Yeah, yeah, which actually that's a really good point to talk about. So at this point, yeah, I was like, I remember I was working for Melbourne Victory that day, and I was doing a post. I'm like, Victory have signed three new players, and I'm like, they're playing Melbourne City, who's eight points clear with the game in hand, right? But one of my favorite things, and shout out to the A League and Keep Up. Um, for the documentaries they've been doing to help grow the game and give insights. And there's been a few great ones. The one with Jason Cummings was great. But my favorite all one, access. yeah, the all access yeah, ones. Right. Yeah. But I think the, the keep up guys that have been doing it, my, my one that I absolutely love was Patrick Kisnorbo. Mm. Cause I was like, 
I've heard he's good, but when you watch yeah. him and the way he speaks and he's like his control of the dressing room and even like he's actually quite astute in regards to the tactics and how he thinks. And oh, thorough. He was out in a park on a Sunday with, was it Raf? R- uh, Ralphie, yeah. Yeah, Ralphie. Yeah, just like, you know, pointing at like ghosts and like, yeah, we should do this and do that. I'm like, this guy's living and breathing it. Yeah. Like, was he as good as what he looked like in that clip? I think with that, All Access gave a good insight of what he was about. But, you know, I got messages from people saying, Surely that was just just an act. I said, not an act. <laughs> yeah, that's what he's like. He was obsessed. Wow. And I think he had meetings with I don't know top coaches in the world, and and obviously the one who is the big dog is is Guardiola at, at the City Group. So I think he might have picked his brain or, Man, he or whatever. Reminded and, me a little bit of him. I'm you not know, and say like he's the same. Very, like, um, very similar. Yeah, and and he's he was very attention to detail. Mm. Like I'm talking millimeters, set pieces, not nah, move across. Like little things, yeah. And um, some people wouldn't wouldn't be able to just soak it in and, and accept that or accept the small finer details. But he had such a group for four years; it's pretty easy for him. Yeah. But we had to then give the performances back to then get the trust, and it was back and forth every week. There was no like, oh yeah, we won. We've got two weeks of so just yeah, that's relentless. <clears throat> every yeah, week. I think um, Scott Galloway told me it might have been a game. You beat someone by like seven goals, six goals. And he came in and, and you guys were celebrating and happy about it. And he was like, it's just another win. Yeah. He said something like that. And Scott told <laughs> Scott told me and I'm we like. We beat, uh, who do we beat? We beat Wanderers 4-1. Yeah. It was 4-1. But they scored first. After the game, whatever. I've, he's coming. He's, sit down. All of you sit down. <laughs> that first half smashed us. We were like, fucking hell, mate. We're 4-1. Okay. Like, we understand it. Yeah. That was what he was. He was. He wanted from minute one to ninety. Like had to be, had to be proper. Yeah. So the results didn't necessarily change when he left, and obviously Rado came in. But I always had this view. I know the results are great, but and I I know Rado. I love Dario. Like I know the Vidicic family. As they're almost as attentive to tactics, and they they live and breathe football. But it does change mm. things. A new voice. Yeah. Like was it was it was that a difficult thing mid season or because if it was the way you guys still got results was I thought quite admirable. Like, cause you usually see sometimes even a dip or, but like you guys yeah, just yeah. kept kind of rising, which is probably a credit, yeah, we credit had to, to well, Rado well, as well. Yeah. It would have been hard for him. Yeah. Coming into an environment where boys, not saying they had every right, but they could have been like, yeah, come on, man, this is, this is our environment. But, um, with him, he had different ways, different ways of expressing what he wanted tactics to PK. So, um, but he's, he's taken it on board. He's, we obviously got results. There was a few defeats, which mm. I think some defeats he just accepted probably more than PK. But when I say accepted, accept them in different ways. Yeah. We want to analyze, okay, how did we go wrong with PK? I'd say, no, nah, it's fucking, we don't lose. It's, yeah. it's not acceptable. But Rado would kind of have that, I don't know, you want to call it mature or calm approach. Yeah, he's been around um, the game. Like, Rado's been, been around the game for a long time. We born, man. Yeah. Do you know and what I mean? I think- Rado would want to have more feedback from, say, the players, where PK is fresh off being a player, so he kind of knew the, the player element, <clears throat> mm. where Rado kind of wanted to go, okay, Jamo, the captain, Lex, me, yep. Yabu, yep. boys, house training, you know, little things like that, little details, okay. but it's a big rebuild. Yeah. It's a big change, man. It's going to be, you know, if there's any City fans watching this, like, just be patient. Yeah. Because you're going to see a completely different team. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to go into next season very shortly because there's obviously a lot that's coming from a Melbourne City perspective, but I just want to, I want to hone in on one round of this year because probably coming into round 25, I'm sitting on my couch thinking, oh, I might, that, that baked cod at Nobu yeah. or that kingfish. You're looking at the menu, <laughs> that, yeah, that kingfish sashimi is looking <laughs> real good. <laughs> He's got three to go. There's about... Four, well, there's about two games left or three games left. You were hounding me too. <laughs> I was like, you know what? Even the sake might go down well. And I'm thinking, oh, this is beautiful. And then in Jamie McLaren fashion, not only does he go and break the Australian domestic goal scoring record or the most goals in A-League history, he goes and does it with a hat trick. <laughs> and I'm sitting there <laughs> thinking like, obviously I'm fucking chuffed for him. Like, and I say this like jokingly, but I could like, I just couldn't think of a better way for you to do it. And and it was just a, such a special moment. I just want you to like take me into that game and how that whole sort of unfolded for you. Well, like the club had been organizing posters and said like 
all-time goal scorer like six weeks before. And I'm like, fuck, I haven't done it yet. I've got <laughs> six goals to go. Um, then I scored a double against Wellington, I'm pretty sure. And then, yeah, coming into that game. <clears throat> so you I, had um, to, what, what, the third one was the clincher? No, nah, the, the second one was the second one was the level. And then the third was to be so, by myself. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. So yeah. the third one was the clinch. Yeah. Yeah. Um <laughs> the way the way it all panned out was was crazy, but none of my family were there. Wife wasn't there. Like I don't know. Maybe it was just fate. You know, like I'd played home games the week before I didn't score. Yeah. Maybe it was just someone saying to me, like, just go and do it on your own terms. Because I don't feel pressure when they're in the crowd. I couldn't care less. Once yeah. I'm on the on the pitch, yeah, it's a clean slate, you know? Yeah. But um, they weren't there, man. And it was like, fuck, I'm by myself. I'm, you know, with the boys, of course, and, and got the match ball. And um, yeah, it was just a nice feeling. I do go and celebrate with them after, but I was in the dressing room FaceTiming them and saying like, fuck, you're only down the road. They were in a, uh, a wedding in Richmond. <laughs> yeah, that's why they couldn't make it though, right? They went to the wedding. They went to the wedding. And they probably, they probably thought three, go wedding. three goals, three goals is a bit of, not a stretch, but like surely not. You know, and then well, you, yeah, yeah. yeah, and my brother will attest to this. He texted right. me. He was like, "Man, if you score a hat trick, I'm gonna be fuming." Oh no! So he texted me that on the Friday, and then, um, and then it happened. But look, it is what it is. It's done now, and we got to celebrate. Um, my favorite photo, one of my favorite, it'll be one of my favorite football images forever. I guarantee you, was when you're sitting on the bench at the end of the game with mm -hmm. the ball, and you can just kind of see the disbelief. Not so much the shock, but like it's it's an element of relief, the disbelief, and the realization of like that's what you've just done. Yeah, because people had associated you with this goal record for about two years. Do you know what I mean? It was so, always there was always a question mark. That's is he what, that's, do it? that's what I mean. So it was like there's a bit of relief there. It wasn't like oh you just got there and it's like he's going to do it. I'm talking like two or <laughs> two or three golden boots ago. Like yeah. people like oh Jamie could be on. Jamie's mm. going to get this. Yeah, and um, yeah, even just to that point, like. I felt like I was going to do it, but I just didn't know when. Yeah. And it was always like that burning, that burning feeling. But I was crying on the pitch. Like, cause it, I went from no goals in the game to three. And I remember <laughs> scoring that goal and just celebrating with the boys. And, you know, the boys got around me and the run from the bench, the coaching staff came. And I just remember pointing to the fans and just doing the number one, of, of course. And there, there probably is footage. I, I've seen it, but I was actually crying with like 10 minutes to go. Oh, and I was, the, the, but the crying was like, fuck man, I've, what, like, what's just happened in the last 30 minutes? Like, what has just happened? Like, <laughs> it just hit you know, up. yeah, it just, just hit, hit me like a, a ton of bricks, <clears throat> mate. Like, I know that people will be watching. My family's not here. I didn't really think that they weren't in the crowd, but it was more like all this, my whole career, I just wanted to be known as one of the best or one of the, have a record of my, my own, you know, and to do that in that, in that game. And, um, it was a Melbourne Derby, West United, so. Uh, at Amy Park, which a place that I've scored the most goals out of anyone, and um, the Jamie, the Jamie yeah. Park, you yeah. get emotional. Like I get emotional for man now because it's like, dude, me too. You know, you kind of think. Remember scoring those goals at Gully oh, and, and scoring all there, those like, goals. The, the reason why I felt it so much, and is because like I saw you from a young age doing this. Like it's not even like, it's not even. It makes me emotional, bro. It's like it's not even a surprise to me. It's like, bro, he was doing this from twelve years old. He was not. He was playing brilliant football as a right winger and scoring goals, and then he'd have an off day, and then he'd score the winner. And yeah. you're like, this guy's been the same player yeah. he is now. But the the validation it took was I was like, he's actually done it on the on the biggest stage now in the country, mm. and no one no one's near it. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, bro. Well, the plan, yeah, the plan is to put it out of reach, but you never know, mate. You, I just hope there's a, there's a kid out there who's got fire in his belly and is like. Fuck, I'm going to chase him. Yeah. I'm going to track him down. So I have I have a view on this. Like, look, records are made to be broken, but I don't think it's possible. I don't think it's possible. In a way, like selfishly, yeah, okay, I want to be. Yeah. You can hear Alan Shearer with Harry Kane right now. And providing, providing, look, obviously, and, you know, I know you love Melbourne City and you want to be there for a long time, but providing, you know, if things in football change, you might there might be another opportunity, you might leave or whatever happens. I still think, like, the, the amount of games per season, the amount of time people spend in the A-League, like, mm. you have, you've, been in here a long time, but you've actually spent a lot of years out of the A League too. Yeah. Like people don't people don't realize that you haven't been here your whole career. Yeah, you've just capitalized on your time here, and I just think that's really hard to do. Like as you said, scoring twenty goal seasons in the A League, mm. not many players do it. Yeah, we've had some great strikers here. Yeah, we have top 
top strikers. Strikers that I'm, I'm in awe of. Yeah, but I'll have more goals than them. Yeah, I know, like, it's, right? It's like, funny, yeah, hey, strikers like, you, you and I have looked up to. Yeah, and you respect him, like, man, can I, can I be shirt or whatever, like little mm. things like that. And, um, but yeah, you want to go down as as one of the best, and um, I want to be known as that goal scorer that just will score off off anything, yeah, off a half chance or when the game's in the balance, who's going to step up? Mm. I'd like to think that after 144 goals, that someone will put their money on me. To, to score and um, it has been a good journey but at 29 a lot of years a lot of mileage in the tank <laughs> left the way you play you can play for another 10 well, that's mate. the thing and, like and your, your style someone is someone said that to me and do you know what I mean yeah they, they kept saying like you know you could be like in a way that's that bench player from at 39 40 years of age if your body goes right Movement, because you're the player darling, that just needs in. to be in the box and and cause havoc and you don't need to run so much but I'm not, I'm not, yeah, so whoever, yeah, who, whoever said that, that before, whoever, it's funny you yeah, say that, yeah. yeah. Hey, and so, I know uh, my shit, I know my shit, bro, so I'm, I'm telling you. Yeah, so it's about 400 <laughs> more goals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The one thing I did want to ask you on it is, um, did you speak to Besh, Besh Aparisa, yeah. who had the record before? Did you speak to him after it? We're, we're very close. Yeah, I can um, imagine, right? It would bond you naturally. A, we shared a golden boot one year and, um, you know, he was a victory and, and my sister worked a victory, so they, they were, the respect was quite close and, yeah. um, yeah, we spoke and he, you can kind of sense that, you know, Bess is, is a winner. He always, like he's won trophies and he, he always wanted to be the guy who's the one that they called upon, you know, and um, to see him happy for me was, would be surprising for others, but not for me. Like yeah. other people would be like, fuck, Bess is, he's fake. Mm -hmm. But for me, the way I spoke, he called me, I didn't call him. Wow. So we kind of spoke and he was like, mate, like ever since we've been, you've been, you've been so generous to me. Um, I was great with his little boy and right. um, we played against each other and yeah, the respect's there. The res respect's huge. Yeah. He probably knows what it take, what it took from him to get to where he yeah, was. Bloody earth. And like, man, he won a lot. He played a lot. He was a, he was a, had a target on his yeah. back for five years. And he was a league. big game player. Like he turned up in, in massive games. Massive games. Bro. You know, so. Yeah. Respect him. Man, yeah. he, did, he did well. He was a great player in the A-League. Um, I want to dive into the World Cup because like I thought you had a, I thought you actually had a really good campaign mm -hmm. from like what you could do. Um, I remember speaking to you before it going like, you're going to get a chance, man. And like, I know it didn't really happen the way we had thought, but, um, <coughs> one thing I do want to talk about is for those that don't know, Jamie's first world cup that he went to, this was a bit more of a different experience of how you got into the team and, and the process yeah. of the world cup journey, because last time, and as I'll say for those, if you really want to know a lot of this journey and I'm talking like the deep journey of Jamie um, for his overseas and as a kid, go back and watch the episode. I don't know which one it was. It's somewhere in episode 50, but you'll find it. Um, you had this run in where you kind of came in late at yeah, the last the World last Cup one. and you kind of just got picked at the last second. Yeah. Whereas this, you'd actually earned runs on the board. You'd played through a lot of the games. You'd been in the qualifiers and you'd had that relationship with Arnie and the Took team. Took a penalty against Peru. Took a penalty against <laughs> Peru, right? Which was, I was like, he's going to score. Yeah. But that would have been fucking nerve wracking. I swear, I'd be more nervous taking a penalty against Newcastle Jets. <laughs> you are kidding me. Why? No, I don't know. I don't know what it was. I think I'm a little bit weird when it comes to pressure. I, I like, because for example, penalties. I like when there's more on the line because there's less concentration needed. Ah. It's just like, I don't know. Maybe I'm different, but I was just like stepping up to that plate. I was like, oh, you did I, look calm. I knew I was going to score. Mm. I don't know what it was. I think my 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 two penalties before that, I went left. So I think he would have thought, okay, number nine Australia, he goes left, and then he dived that way, and I, I went that way. But I was always going to go that way, right? Um, and yeah, if there's the goalkeepers watching, I'm not going to give too much secrets. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's. I don't know. It's like sometimes when I've got like that, that added pressure, like Ibrox, I scored an Ibrox in front of 50,000 yeah. or hate me, but I took it and scored. Yeah. But, you know, a, a home game against MacArthur, for example, at Amy Park, My I God. missed it. Yeah. So it's kind of like there was probably four or 5,000 there. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's, it's, it's a, a strange, might just be a striker thing or you just, the, the higher the, the tempo is or the higher magnitude pressure mm. is- the more clarity I have. I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to give away your yeah. like penalty taking technique. So tell me to F off if I, if I try <laughs> here. But one thing I thought was interesting was Mourinho talking about Kane's penalty taking. Mm -hmm. He picks during the week. Yep. When I've taken penalties, I pick when I pick up the ball. Do you have a view on what you do? On the day before. Yeah. Day before. Yeah. Okay. So it's similar so to I Kane. Watch, That's similar to Kane. I watch 
clips maybe on the Wednesday, Thursday, mm. and then on the Friday, I'll take a couple like mirror image ones where I'm going to go. Right. And then the minute I feel the sweet spot, like connection's good, side netting. In the change room. Or whatever. It's like, okay, process. And that's in, it's saved in my brain. Wow. And then you just got to go out there and execute. And wow. if you don't, it's it's on me. Like yeah. the MacArthur one, for example, or Danny Vukovic, um, saved me at Mariners. Yeah. Same thing. Like I just didn't have the process right. And I didn't, the connection wasn't good. Yeah. It had nothing to do with preparation. It was just the connection on the day. I didn't hit it right. Yeah. And that's something probably as a, a person who's going to continue to take penalties, I've got to work on. I love this. I love how this is turning into like a striker purity like yeah. conversation. This is mad. Um, an academy. Yeah, yeah. Be academy. Just strikers though. Yeah, you need to have a you need to have a goal in your backyard to enter. <laughs> um, uh, the one thing I, I think around the Socceroos, and I was very bullish on the Socceroos, and I'm glad I was because a lot of people I didn't think the Socceroos had a lot of the nation's respect going into the World Cup for what it had achieved. Like people had hammered the squad and said, it's not as good as what the previous generations were. And I was like, if they're not that good, how do they beat Peru? They're like, tell me how Peru's any different to Uruguay. Like, and Peru was like one of the best yeah. nations in South America. They have great players. Do you think post World Cup now you guys earned the nation's respect and like with what you boys did was pretty admirable? Hey? I think so. And, and, you know, I get noticed more around town and it's, it's not even about Melbourne City. It's more, oh, you're yeah, the Socceroo. Yeah. You know, and, and it's cool. kind of like I went to Perth. Some kids noticed me, like I played for Perth Glory, but no one gave a fuck. It was like he, he's a socceroo because the World Cup attracts the the, the for some just reason, normal fan or yeah, any maybe, sporting fan. They they gravitate to like they're a legend. Yeah, and maybe because the games were on at a reasonable time or, or whatever, they just familiarise a face, or it's the goatee or something. Something must just stick out. But um, yeah, they, I think they are getting more respect. Yeah. Um, however, what I will say is Asia's getting better. Yes, it's going to get harder. It's going to get harder. Yeah, and I know. I think. What we find, and this is me just being honest, we we play better against the better nations. So, for example, the Argentinas, you, you can kind of, you know, you're going to, they've got the quality players, but when you play Jordan away, Fuck. Messi would find it hard to play Jordan away. That's how that's how hard it is. This is the other thing. You play the, the conditions. Man. They, they, they put you on a cow paddock. It's, the, the pitch is not great. The, the security is probably not the best. Just whatever. The, the preparation is just completely different than rocking up to, a two hundred million dollar stadium in Qatar and playing against Argentina, who just love to play football, and yeah. they'll give you space and time. They won't press you, but when you're playing against Iraq, Iran, Syria, man, they're mm -hmm. they're proper warriors. They're fighters. They don't give up. Yeah. Um, even like we played a home game against Nepal, you know how fit those guys are. Really, like they wouldn't they would not stop running for because they they live in a high altitude, so they've got like double the lungs that we've got. And we did the analysis on that and said like. You're going to play against these guys. Quality, you'll be above. But just know that they're they're probably fitter than you. Yeah. It's actually such a – I mean, I don't know what it's like now, so you can answer this, but through my experiences when I played in Asia, the only normal game where I felt like it was actually football was when we played Japan. And at that time, Japan was the best nation. And Korea. So, so like, that was the most comfortable I felt was playing the best because everyone else, it felt like a dogfight. It was. And you, it sounds bad that you sink to their level, but it's it's, it's almost like it becomes – it doesn't become about a qual – it doesn't become about quality. It just mm -hmm. comes about – Who's going to turn up on the night? Who's going to fight? Who's going to scrap for every ball? Um, challenges and the desire to win a game. But mm. when you play against the Japan, South Korea, Saudi Arabia, yeah. high end quality now. Yeah. Um, there's some good footballers in Asia, and and you know people wouldn't even know what Uzbekistan is, but they're a good team oh, too. Bro, they, we've got them. They in throw the Asian They throw haymakers. Man. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. So we're talking about we've got India in the group. Okay. You know, so there's going to be. Tough opponents, but sometimes the leveler can be the pitch. If you play on a good pitch, then okay, we have no excuse. Yeah, we we should be the dominant side that want to dominate. But um, yeah, we are improving. We've got a young squad. Um, I'm, I feel like I'm not getting old, but it's you feel like one of the older statesmen in the squad. And the previous campaign was was obviously um, Aziz and and Juki and those guys, older guys who were in the 31, 32 category that would help the younger lads. But now it's like the next phase. Um, yeah. it's going to be on, on, on the shoulders of, of guys like myself, but, yeah. um, at, at that age bracket, not saying I'm going to be in every camp, but it's, well, yeah, you're the, you've been around, there's young boys from like the, the, the 20 to 24, that, Boss, for yeah, the Connor Metcalfs, Nathan, Nathaniel Atkinson, Tilios, all those boys are going to start to be regulars in Socceroos and we just have to be around there to, to help guide them and, um, and let them go on their way. Cause I had that in, in my campaign. 
do you do you pinch yourself a little bit? Like you played at the last World Cup, you were at the World Cup before, you were once a kid watching yeah. the 06 World yeah. Cup like me. Do you like, and now you're getting recognised as that Socceroo guy that we would have recognised mm. as like Viduka or Kuhl or Cahill? Like, it hit, do, yeah, it hit home when we played against Tunisia and I actually had, thought I changed the game a bit. Because yeah, you brought me on, and I, I thought you had an assist. I played a great cross to left. Oh, I, I thought know, that was going the right. <laughs> like we, that's the thing. We, we played together at club level, right? So, flip side of that, he, if he had a cross to me, probably would have been a goal. But mm. it's kind of he burst. He's played the ninety minutes, so he's bursting his ass to get there and just put a, a cross with my left foot. But it just showed that I d- belonged to be there at, at that point in time. And um, the the atmosphere against Tunisia was fantastic. They were whistling the whole time we had the ball and. Just being with my mum and dad after the game, taking a photo with them was was enough for me to be like, "Ma, oh, we made it. Like mm. it's that's it. This is what this is all we worked for. Um, we've reached the top. We've reached the top of what I wanted to do. Yes, there's more to come and, and more more things you want to break and achieve. But as a kid coming from Sunbury United to a World Cup, it's it's been done. Yeah. That, that box has been ticked. So, um, well, once I st- stepped foot on that pitch was. Was goosebumps, mate. Yeah, I can only yeah. imagine. I'd pay money. I'd yeah. pay money to feel it, bro. <laughs> I'd pay money, serious money, which I'm going to pay at Rockpill soon. But um, just want to go like Time's I can't. Table. <laughs> yeah, we're going to go soon. But I actually just want to talk about like probably your, your one of your greatest football photos of all time is the one next to Lionel Messi. Mm. Like, just take. We can't not ask a question on the podcast. Like, what's it like playing against him? Just say, being on the same field as him, and like, does he have that godlike figure and sort of? aura around him is like what sort of people like he's he's one of the most followed people in the world yeah he does but I think he, he appreciates if you just give him space like it's he's like any other footballer he just wants to go out there kick a ball please to with his mates play well he knows the, the pressure I think if there's anyone can handle pressure in the world it's him like mm-hmm. I don't think he feels pressure yeah, yeah. I could be wrong but I, the way he plays his football I don't think he feels the the, the pressure of 60,000 Chinese guys wearing messy jerseys because they were they were so it was it was amazing to see, um, but even just like little little interactions that you have with him, and, and you you have a bit of a laugh. He winked at me because Matty Ryan lost a toss, I think, and and he had the ball. He was about to kick off, and I said, "My ball or your ball?" And he just goes like that. <laughs> he just winks. And he's uh, about to say like it's my ball. I love and, that. You know, a little bit of cockiness from him to say, "No, no." It's, oh, I love that. I'm Lionel Messi. It's my ball. But I love that. that's good though. And and that's kind of. And then a minute later, he puts one in the top corner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's so <laughs> special, isn't he? Yeah, and. He, he exerts himself when he has the ball. Like he gets tired, but when he doesn't have the ball. He walks. He, yeah, he does. He does walk around, but you can see his teammates say, man, he doesn't need to do the work. We'll do it for him. But um, he probably does five, six Ks a game, but you give him the ball and it's you can't get it off him. And he's, he's a special. And to play against him twice, yeah. um, not many people probably can say that. So pretty um, humbling and um, experienced to say and, yeah, he's, he'll probably be there for the next World Cup because he looks like he's in shape. He doesn't look like he's slowing down, and America will be great for him. Yeah, the wealth he's going to make, he'll be able to yeah. invest a bit back in his body. He'll be all right. Um, let's go into next season because we've we've spoken of the recent soccer review, and this is like all just happened in the last 12 months, everyone. Jamie's become the domestic um, top scorer in domestic league and obviously the, the soccer review engagement playing against Messi in the World Cup. But going into next season, one like what I like about you is you play better when you wear the armband. Mm-hmm. Is that a potential, like, is that, I don't know if that's going to be something you're looking at or want, but obviously big respect to Scott Jamison, who we've yet to have on this show. So we might have to, we might have to do that. But Jamo had a decorated career in the A-League and he, he just retired and he was the captain. Yeah. It's a potential role next year. Yeah. There's a big hole to fill. Uh, do I want to fill that hole? I'm not sure. Cause he was like a, he was not just an on-field captain. Uh, he, look, I think people think captain is just you, you put a little bit of elastic around your arm on no, game day and you look like a hero. It's a job too, man. It, it's a job and a half. And yeah. it is controlling the dressing room. It's uh, meeting with fans. It's it's things that, you know, that go f- through board level. It does. Like the, the, the board, the CEOs, football directors, they want to know how the boys are. And normally the message just comes back through the captain. Mm. And Jamo was fantastic. Probably I've played under some some very, very good captains, Mille, Millsy. Um, Jamo, of course, we're talking about him, but um, so you have a huge respect for him, don't you? Like, yeah, I, I noted that without with you. a doubt. Like, you have a massive respect just for because him. we were so close that I saw the stuff that he did, mm. and that's why I think a lot of in, in my case, I think not that he retired too early, but he still had a lot to give for mm. the dressing room because with the rebuild, 
also would have been perfect for it. Would have been perfect for it. But where he's going, he's probably even better suited. He's going to be an assistant coach. Okay. So for him, it's kind of like okay, well, he's going to be a coach that can help the next gen, the next the the new players coming in to be around our our standards and and whatever. So um, he'll be a fantastic coach um, in the near future. But yeah, the captaincy, whoever whoever takes it, which uh, wouldn't even know what 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 the discussions are, but it's bigger than just, yeah, like I said, just around the arm. And um, yeah. it's going to well, take. Wore you wore it a lot this year because Jamo was injured and it was like, it was, you yeah. know, obviously Jordy Boss was on fire at times. So you, you had to wear it at times. So. Yeah, you think you can do it, but I was almost like a, a vice captain. Yeah. And that's where it's like, that's where it's the pre- the pressure and, and the responsibility is not really that's on you. That's the fun part. What yeah. You did. <laughs> Literally. It you, is. You, it was just wearing elastic. You're, <laughs> you, you're just doing the, the stuff for show. Yeah. Um, and you're just keeping. Uh, the sh- the ship's steady, so to speak, but this is proper, proper yeah. now. It's going to be um, whoever is coming in or whatever, whoever does take it, it, it can't just be a short, short gap. It needs to be a long-term thing like how Jamo had it. Yeah. And um, because the club has high standards yeah. and, you know, to, to win three premierships in a row, to stay at the top for, for four years, being four grand finals. Um, yeah. You need, you need a strong head. Yeah. It's um. You're also coming into your end of year end of your contract next year too, mm-hmm. which is something I always like talking to players about because naturally everyone always thinks it's like you got to do this, you got to do that, and people don't understand like it's much more than sometimes just a football decision. You've got a baby; it's a life yeah, yeah. decision. There's so many factors. Like, is that something you'll think about in the early part of the season, or are you going to day by day approach with it, like see see where it sort of lands and how you yeah. feel? Yeah, I've, like I've been in this position before. Um, albeit like more of a younger player when you're just kind of free minded and, and whatever. But, you know, recently just built the house, um, yeah. obviously baby on the way. So probably this year, knowing that I've got a contract for the year is, is good cool. knowing that because the stability will be at least for the next 12 months to, <clears throat> to settle in. And, um, and it's also good for Eva too, because if you're happy at home, then your football stuff will take care of itself. Correct. And, um, but I've always said that, you know, home is where you feel the most comfortable and that's, the people around you. It's not, mm-hmm. uh, you know, four walls and a roof. Yep. It's the people that are around you and um, the, the environment that you're in. And, and City have been great with me, I have to say. It's been four, four and a half years now and um, it'll be five at the end of this wow. this coming season. But beyond that- You never know, man. You football, don't know. We know. Yeah, fo- you don't know. F- football, anything can happen, yeah. bro. And look, wherever I've been or, or even for this year, you'll always give your best. You'll always, whenever you put the badge on you, you respect it, you honour it. Um, this has been the best club for me in my career because it's been the longest. I've broken records, won some trophies, um, and, and done some special things along the way. And yeah, it's football's um, unpredictable. So whatever happens, mate, it's 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 in the air. It's that's a fact, and um, we'll just have to to take each month as it comes. And um, ultimately, my job is to score goals. And yeah. if you do that, then whether I stay here or stay on. Uh, or move on. You're gonna be looked is, after. Is down to is down to performances. Correct. It really is. Yep. Beautifully said. Well, final question, which listeners know what's coming. We attest three traits to success in in sport, in business, whatever it is, and obviously all three are important. But just want you to pick the one that correlates or resonates with you across your journey the most: resilience, drive, or ambition. Which one did Jamie McLaren rely on or, or look to the most out of those three to to get you where you are now? I, if we're talking about just even the last twelve months, well, let's forget go last about the career. Let's go last twelve Resilience months. Resilience, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. Like every day was something different, right. positive than a negative. Yeah, really high, really low, and they're the they're the times where you really lean on the people around you. And um, but without a doubt, resilience. In my case, all three of them are important, but resilience is is huge. And um, if you don't have it, it's going to be a, a tough road. But you got to you got to go through these go through these things to um, to feel the the positive side of the game and yeah. and positive side and um, it, it's funny because we just play a game of football like <laughs> no right you know what I mean like we're gonna finish this and we're gonna go for dinner and have a laugh about our junior <laughs> our childhood yeah. yeah we just kick a ball for 10, 15 years and uh, after that it's just a, it's just a, be you, back to normal life I don't want to be known I remember you, uh, your podcast which was fantastic but. You don't want to be known as a footballer. You just want to be known as a person. You want to be known, I'm going to be known as a dad soon. So yeah. for me, I'm like, yeah, yeah I want my yeah. daughter to be proud of, of her dad, of what he's done on a, on, a, on a grass pitch with a ball. But 
she ain't going to care yeah. until she really, really understands. She just needs that, that father figure and love. And that's something that I, I can't wait for is something outside of the game. I can't believe yeah. you're going to be a dad. Yeah. It's fucking- It's like, about time, man. Like you were sitting on my couch. We were playing Aston Villa like online against, against the Jagos. The Jagos. <laughs> Like we were 12 years old, like having sleepovers and shit. Now, now Jay, James Jago's got kids. You're going to have kids, man. It's, it's amazing stuff, man. You and, um, you and Luke, you're still going out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shout out, Lukey, lad. Nah, mate, I appreciate you coming on. Obviously, this podcast was a celebration for all you've achieved in the last 12 months and, and what's going to come ahead. So um, we better get to Rockville, baby, because I've got to pay. Rent's due, man. Rent's due. Let's go. i got to eat. Thanks, brother. Good man. Good at.